Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, February 6, 2019 at 6.10 here in the municipal offices in Deerfield. Um, first, we'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please surprise? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just so everyone knows, this meeting is being recorded. Um, first item on our agenda was an executive session that's been postponed, and we don't have any further details on that. Uh, the next thing, I guess we should approve the minutes of December 26th. I make a motion that uh, we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. We should probably wait till 6.30 for that poll hearing. So we did the meeting. We have a one-day liquor license for February 9th from Hardwick Vineyards and Winery. Get the application. What's that? Oh, can you hear me? Microphone. I don't know if it's on or you need to get closer. It doesn't sound like any of that. Doesn't sound like it's on? Do you think it's on? Do you hear it? Oh, okay. Okay. You gotta eat it. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. She's always telling me what to do. I hate getting phone calls saying you, we were not speaking loud enough. Okay. Make it home. Thank um, you. So, I, I guess I can move to approve the one-day liquor license uh, for February 9th for Hardwick Vineyard and Winery. Oh, um, I'll Canada. second that. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have one for us? We'll, we'll stamp them. Okay. We'll, yeah. Excellent. We have a request from Deerfield for Responsible Development to send a letter to Mass DOT. Have you had a chance to read that? Yeah, but um, it's not. Uh, I was just hoping that we, uh, we could put it off for a little while because I don't know the ramifications from the legal point of view. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Tolly Stark, Keats Road. Um, I also have some information to go along with that letter that you guys have not received yet that I wanted to give to you. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, just we haven't had a chance to talk to a lawyer yet, and I, I, I feel uncomfortable making a decision on, you know, private property sort of without some ramifications on this. For, um, yeah. He should oh. be here later. He has another meeting, but he should be here later. But just, I mean, um, to address that, I, I read the letter, and uh, <clears throat> I guess, uh, first of all, and, and most importantly, the town of Deerfield has no legal authority over the state highway anyways. You know, the state has their own traffic engineers. They do the studies. Uh, they also send it out for peer review. But I think what makes this a moot point is that the uh, curb cut that you talk about in that letter it's been issued five years ago and it's still there so it's um, there is currently a um, application for that curb cut and um, the information that I just gave you is a wetland report that was done on December 6 so I will let you guys have time to you know look that over and um, Hopefully we could discuss it at the next meeting. Would be great. Yeah, I, I appreciate you um, giving us um, additional information. Um, I, I I don't want to make a decision on this. Well, I don't think we, there's a decision to make. I mean, I if you have some information that says that there there's not a curb cut there, I'd be interested in seeing it because the applicant has a curb cut permit for that driveway that was issued in uh, 2014, I believe. Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, um, there's a different applicant that is looking to get a curb cut than um, who you may be referring to. And also, there may have been an expiration date on the curb cut you're referring to as well. Yeah, no, um, curb cuts are good forever. I've had several on along Route 5, and I got my first one in 79. And, you know, they're, they're, what it is, it's a permit to access the highway. But once it's there, it's, it's really there. Um, but, well, I appreciate that, and I would be happy to look into um, any documents that I may have around the uh, driveway permit for that. 
Okay. Thanks, Tolly. Uh, the next item on our agenda is. So, uh, so we would just table this, right? Yeah. Okay. Table. It's tabled, if so, you don't mind. Thank you. The next uh, item is a transfer station inspection report. Um, I, I just want to take an opportunity for a minute um, to say um, how appreciative I am of, of the work that Bud's doing there. I mean, he's just really tries so hard to keep it neat and tidy, and um, and I know people. I know people are, um, you know, he's giving some, getting after people to clean up the recycles, but. Just an example of what's happening is in 2017, say we were getting $100 um, for recycling per unit or whatever, we're getting four, we will be getting $4 this year. So this is a, a very serious thing, and, and, and we are being charged back if our contamination rate is too high. And when they talk about contamination rate, they mean, you know, how clean our recyclables are, and if you put tangibles in there like the you know, your plastic bag. Say you dump your, you have you have a plastic bag with your recycles and you just dump the whole thing in. Those ta tangibles cost money and have to be hand removed from the sorter. So the contamination rate, the chargeback rate, increases the cost to all of us that use the transfer station. So when Bud goes after you for cleaning, keep trying to keep your recycles clean, it really impacts all of us. So. Um, I just want to say thanks for but to Bud for trying to do uh, be really responsible and making sure we have completely full containers before they're pulled. All these things impact the cost of the operation, and um, Bud is really on top of it, and I really appreciate it. Great. So you need to sign that report. I don't know if you've started discussing it or not. I can't. Can't oh. tell. Um, so, what are oh, we? No, we have. Um, I guess we need to uh, sign the report. Yeah. Um, did Trevor? Did you know if Trevor had any input? Uh, uh, any questions on this? Any input? Did Trevor have any input on this? Uh, I haven't gotten any feedback. From okay. Him yet. He'll, he will be here later. He knows he needs to be here to sign the warrant. Town meeting. Okay. Um, I would like to add, um, I did post the transfer station attendant, the fourth position today. Oh, so on the, the, website the posting and is today? the uh, bulletin okay. board and um, that okay. you voted to uh, hire another person. Okay. Yep. Do you have a copy you'd like us to sign? Okay. Yep. I'm just pulling I make a motion that we find, uh, sign the report as presented. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. I think it only needs your signature. So are, are we going to, um, did, did Kevin say there's any problem getting the methane um, gas detector installed? I thought we talked about it. In, I, I just, I just wanted to ask but you. But no, I don't know. No, I haven't this time yet. yet. It's, okay. uh, shouldn't I sign it here? It says his title and print name. Here's his signature. <laughs> yes. How do you spell That's small? their farm. <laughs> so. Okay. So we need to sign the warrant for the. February 25th, 2019, special town meeting. Do I make a motion we assign the warrant. Do you want to wait a little long, discuss it, and wait till Trevor gets here? Oh, well, we can do that. That's fine. Any problems? Oh, that's no. it? Okay. I have a, I can get my report. Okay. Go ahead. I'd like him to I can't find my. What? Oh, I just can't find my agenda. Um, I don't know when we get here. If you, if you, um, what? What did you tell me? Okay, I can't hear you. <laughs> so um. while you're, while you're, I just want to report um, back on last Thursday's meeting at GCC, the radio emergency um, countywide meeting. 
uh, uh, John Pachor did an outstanding job of pres uh, presenting why not to build out a parallel radio system. Um, the cost alone to Deerfield would be annually 125000 or more money, um, which is very, very conservative. I think it would be far more money. Um, migrating over to the state system is the only logical thing to do. And um, we're hoping that, I mean, it was wonderful Trevor was there. So we spoke individually that neither one of us would support the build out. And therefore, um, it would be um, critical that um, the, you know, we advocate for migrating over. And so I, I think there's going to be some discussion, but I'm hoping um, that successfully we made sure that we were not going out to bond for additional expense of a new system plus maintenance for every year plus a new build, build out in 10 to 12 years again. So hopefully that's been avoided. And I just want to say John Petrork did a wonderful job. So Thank one, you. one other thing, it was um, uh, it's at the very end of your packet um, from the assessors today, a letter. They've been negotiating back and forth for a pilot with the um, railroad solar, and um, they've not been able to uh, come to an agreement at this point. So the letter's just for your information. What does that do to um, the, um, you know, their standing with this? It state? doesn't help it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wouldn't think so. Thank you. So, um, so my report is in the form of recommendations. Um, some of them are long-standing ones, um, and um, I don't want to read the whole thing. But basically, it's saying that I've, I've been associated with the town of Deerfield since 2013, um, and kind of on an ongoing basis, either as the interim <coughs> or as a consultant, and the last couple of years as the town administrator. And um, I was here when the DOR did the report, which focused mostly on the town administrator and the select board operations. A number of those things have actually come to fruition. You strengthened the administrator's uh, job description. Um, I can't remember the other things right now, but I'm focusing on here are the things that uh, I think still need to be addressed and then some other items. Um, one is, and this has been talked about, is to have a consent agenda at meetings so you can get through those sim small things that you have at every meeting. You can take one vote rather than vote on each item. And you can also pull something out if you want to have more discussion. But it's just a way to get through those regular small things that happen. Um, the other, and we've talked about this, um, to, and I'm going to read this, to delegate resident concerns to the town administrator. The select board members are the chief executive officers of the town. Administrator is the chief administrative officer. It is critical the board understand this distinction. Residents and others should be encouraged to work through the town administrator rather than calling individual select board members to resolve issues involving town operations. In turn, select board members should refer these kinds of operational concerns to the administrator. The administrator will work with departments to address these concerns and if the matter rises to a level of need for select board discussion and decision making, the administrator should take these to the issue, to the board for resolution. There are a number of things that have happened like that and it just ends up being a tremendous amount of time wasted. Um, and um, it's, it's not saying the board shouldn't be involved and know about issues. It's simply saying there are a lot of just small things that could be taken care of very quickly as an administrative function within the building. I, I don't mean to interrupt you in it. No, go and ahead. I, and I, and I, I understand fine. that, and I, and I do, I do appreciate that. Uh, the, the immediate concern that I have is if a resident calls one of the select board members and, you know, they want to vent or they have an issue, uh, I would hate to say, look at, you know, call the town administrator, I don't have time, or it's yeah, not my, that's a different you know, thing. because they, they do really, you know, Look right. to us for yeah. something, right. so we can bring that concern to yes. you as we are. Okay. to Diana. <laughs> sorry, to That's Diana. how I've operated in the past. Yeah. In fact, mostly people do want to just vent, yeah. but a lot of the problems I get are not angry. You know, they're just simple operational sure. things. I talk to the department, and I promise the department heads and my and the staff that I've worked with here that I and I've always done it this way wherever I've worked. 
I will listen to the concern. I will appreciate the concern. I'll make sure I understand what the concern is. And I'll go talk to the department head. And I'll say, what can you tell me about this? I'm not going to say, oh, that's terrible, and run to the department head and say, what can you tell me? Sure. Well, how to, how's, what's the best way to resolve this so we can move forward and get everybody satisfied here? In an incident where it's clearly something that the board needs to discuss together and resolve together, then that would come forward. But there are so many things that really don't rise to the occasion of needing your attention at the board level. But if you do get a call, I would, of course, you would listen to someone. Sure. And then at an appropriate time say, I'm going to ask you to call the town administrator so they can help resolve that. Okay. Um, and then you can call them back say, is that resolved? <laughs> um, the other one is, uh, has been, uh, is this is to relinquish the role of Board of Health. Uh, the town has been talking about this for decades. I remember reading about this 20, 30, about almost 30 years ago in the newspaper. Um, and that in 1997, you had a town meeting vote directing the select board to uh, appoint a committee to study the matter. Um, the responsibilities of a board of health necessitate much fuller leadership and staff time than the town is capable of providing with this current structure we have now. Given the laws for divesting roles from the select board, it would take several votes, town meeting and ballot, to get to the point of electing a separate board of health. I recommend the town proceed in this direction and as a way forward, consider appointing an advisory board of health. Parenthetically, I worked with one uh, that was very helpful when I was in Wilbraham to both assist the select board with tasks, policies, and programs. We fall behind, and I found in my experience here in the last two years, I can't, do, I can't do the Board of Health, sewer, select board, everything else. We, it is a full, busy board that needs attention. And um, there are many things this town does well, thanks to Carolyn and her interest in this area. We have a terrific town, a health, uh, town nurse. In fact, someone came to me today and said that, and I said, I would like to bring that up tonight. Uh, it's one of our shining uh, parts of our our public health mission, I think, and all the work that goes into emergency preparedness and response. Uh, but there's a whole lot that we're not doing. We're, you know, and we've talked about and talked about and talked about adopting regs about this and that, but we, we don't have the time or the, um, uh, well, the time, frankly, <laughs> you know, to sit and discuss at length and figure out, you know, uh, well, part of the Among reason, all three board the reason, members. Yes, but part of the reason, Wendy, that I'm against this is because we as a town don't fully fund it. And so the only way that Board of Health issues get resolved is because we as the Board of Health, like I had asked that we have the vaping um, subject on the, you know, vaping, so we could prohibit vaping because I wanted to set a public hearing so I wanted us to talk about it tonight and it's not even on the agenda. Well I didn't you didn't give me it and Dick didn't give me it. So I said where are where are the well, I had Connor I had, had it. Connor had it. He he got the the Somerville yeah. regs. Yeah. And that Connor got thing. it and showed it to you and we had it on no, the I agenda never saw for it. tonight. I never saw it. And, and, and but it, that's so beside the point. I don't want to get into discussion. I know, I'm making these part as of recommendations. The that doesn't gonna work is the town has to realize that we have to spend money. That's on right. It. Well, I think and, and so as long as we're not spending money, then the select board keeps the, you know, like I go to the MAPCO meetings, I spend probably three meetings a month making sure that we have, uh, we are dealing with Board of Health issues. I represent us on several boards relating to Boards of Health issues. And until we fund that, it, it's not going to happen. I mean, what will happen is it will just what has happened in other towns is when you have an unfunded Board of Health, the priorities just aren't, no one discusses it, no one does anything. If you had a fully funded Board of Health and Health Department, that's a whole different thing. So we just don't fund all, it. All the other towns I've worked in besides Wilbraham have had Boards of Health, dozens of towns. So, um, yeah, but at any funded. rate, I, I'm really just making recommendations for you to discuss. Yep. So um, it comes down to money. Right. But it comes down to also in the engagement of a three-member board that has the select board on its agenda, the, the Board of Health on its agenda, and now with the, the sewer 
not now, but for a long time, sewer and the, the, what's going on. I agree, ahead. and that's the yeah. same thing with the sewer commission. I don't have a problem with separating us from being a sewer commission, but again, it comes down to money. It's not that people have problems with the decisions we're making per se, it's just that we got to spend $30 million, and that's the way it is. And if you have a separate sewer commission, that's not really going to change. You know, so. Well, I guess the way I look at her point is that, um, you know, I certainly have seen that <clears throat> the town hall itself is understaffed, that I know yeah. that I've been to several of the uh, planning, I mean, not planning board, uh, the finance committee meetings, and they, they don't like to create new positions. But there's a lot of things that fall through the cracks that just don't get done. Or burn and, you out. Bye. And, you know, <laughs> and, 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 you know, we all appreciate Wendy, that. Wendy, I'm, I'm absolutely agreeing with you. I mean, I'm saying it comes down with the money. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I think Wait, like it's the next part of my recommendation. Right. But if, if we if we spend a lot of money on a lot of different things, and I, I think uh, a priority should be that we have well-staffed uh, town halls so we can deal with a lot of the stuff that doesn't get pushed by the own. You know, so. I, I agree. Okay. Thank you. That's we'll great because that's where I'm going. Okay. Let me let me yep. finish. Um, so, we talked a lot about and we did at the last meeting about staffing. And um, so my recommendation is that we you fill the position of executive assistant. It, it's it's absolutely needed in the office. I've been I've been wearing 92 hats. Um, and offer a salary to attract a candidate with the experience and skills needed for the position. Um, I would move, um, and this is tied very much in into the next um, staffing uh, situation I'm going to talk about in a, after this, but to move the zoning board administrative responsibilities from the administrative assistant in the select board office to the inspections and planning office administrative assistant. So all land use board, planning board, ZBA, CONCOM activities are coordinated in one office with the in, with inspections as well as with the public because people are going back and forth oh where do i go for this where do i go for that and this transfer of responsibility should wait until there is full-time administrative assistant capacity in the planning and inspections office then i get to the inspections and planning office and i go either way inspections and planning are planning and inspections Hire a full-time building commissioner as soon as possible, and if finding a qualified full-time commissioner is not possible, partner with the FERCOG, shared inspectors program, or another community to fill this position. A full-time administrative assistant is needed in that office as well. Hire a full-time planner community development professional for that office who will coordinate all land use activities with the administrative assistant and work closely with the building commissioner slash zoning enforcement officer and other town inspectors. The planner could additionally handle community development and other special projects. And this is lo a lot, actually, but uh, such as green communities, complete streets, hazard mitigation planning and projects, municipal vulnerability, and many others, and work with town the town building's advisory committee. Um, I'm not disagreeing, but again, it comes down uh, to money. Absolutely. The lack of, well, if you don't take care of it here, you end up paying later with lawsuits and other things, mm -hmm. or, or losing people, as we have, as you are going to. And we are in transition. So this is it. This is the core operation. The lack of staff capacity during the last several years has left Deerfield behind in numerous ways. Deerfield is not a little town. It is a small town that is very busy with major projects that need professional assistance, both from inside the town offices and with outside professionals. Current staffing does not meet the need for in-house professional assistance, and perhaps ad administrative assistance as well. Um, and well, also we've we've lost working with Pat Smith, who is retired from uh, FERCOG, who was our professional planner working with the town for many years. So the town faces many pressing needs. Leadership from the board is critical, and it must focus on the core operations of the town. Without leadership, others try to fill in the gaps, and as we have seen, many town officials, boards, and committees move out of their lane, and there is some chaos and disagreement about who is doing what and when. The operating budget is the primary policy document of the town, financing the operations, services, and projects the select board and town meeting approve. There are several major capital projects looming, requiring scrutiny, focus, and priority setting. This is a core responsibility of the select board. It is important to remember the select board represents all the residents of the town and makes decisions for the entire community. 
Of course, each member of the board brings their perspectives into decision making, but it is important to remember the community is made up of people with a range of expectations and needs from town government. The diversity of opinion among current board members is good and would be enhanced with a commitment to listen to understand each other and accept there will be disagreement and divided votes. Thank you. We just need a couple extra million. I'm sorry? We just need a couple extra million. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. I don't think you need a couple extra no, mi mi million for, for staffing. So we need to look at the allocation of the resources. Yeah, so, <sighs> yeah as they were doing in that meeting with setting priorities. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, whole hearing time. Do you have any announcements you'd like to make? No. I don't either. I, well, I've oh. already said that about the meeting last you, week. Uh, what do you want to do with the warrant? Should we just sign it and leave it for well, Trevor to sign? Well, we have the poll hearing. He's here. We have someone okay. here for that. So okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. That, All right. We'll, we'll get go that back. done, and then we can sign the warrant. Sure. For Trevor. Hey, so you're here for Verizon for the poll hearing? Yes, Why don't yeah. you come on up to the table? <clears throat> Please introduce yourself so we all know the people in TV land know who you are. Okay, for the record, uh, my name is Paul Davis. I work for a company by the name of UC Synergetic in Sunderland. We are an engineering contract company that does work for Verizon, and I am here representing Verizon on their behalf. Thank you. Welcome. So I guess I'll go right into the petition here. Um, <clears throat> the petition tonight is for poll T7 and a half E12M on Lee Road, 267 feet south of Boynton Road West. And the reason for the poll, um, Eversource is requesting the poll to place some of their equipment on this particular poll. And it will be what we call in our business a mid-span poll between the two current polls that are there, uh, poll number seven and poll number six. <clears throat> so uh, basically, long story short, is the polls being requested again by Eversource to place their equipment, and Verizon will set the poll if the poll is granted tonight. And that's it. Here's the map. Okay. It's in your packet. You've got that. Yeah, I, find, I know where you're talking okay. about. Anyways, but. There was someone who walked in today, and he's who's in, nearby. He got the notice, and he said he's fine with it. Okay. okay. I hadn't heard anything on the other side. I'm, I'm fine with it too. Usually people yeah. complain that they have problems. Problems. So. Okay. Do you want to make a motion to approve the placement? Yes, I make a motion. We approve the poll placement. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I guess you're good to go. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Be safe going home. Three page, three documents, and we send them back to Verizon. Correct. Town clerk, and she does it. Right. She's usually a town clerk takes care of well, they they, they, they tell, tell Verizon we made it easy for them. They should do the same for the residents when they need <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, you want to do that right now? Sure. Okay. Um, so uh, last Friday I attended the group meeting about the uh, anaerobic digester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Um, <laughs> um, in, from my perspective, there are two major uh, hurdles that need to, go, to be jumped over before I think we can move forward as a group. Uh, one is uh, Greenfield's council agreeing to fund the next step. There's been a feasibility study done that shows it's feasible. Um, I thought they were citing it uh, at their landfill, but 
it's the, the site there they looked at and the feasibility study analyzed uh, was at their uh, treatment plant and we all know where that is and I brought up the issue about uh, the water the and the uh, um, consultant who did the feasibility study said it was actually a, a positive thing. I'm not an engineer and I don't know why that would be, but um, at any rate. So um, the other hurdle, so getting, getting it through the council, as you know, if you've been following, Greenfield has a lot on its plate with financial uh, other challenges, big projects, the library, et cetera. So um, we'll watch to see what happens there. Um, USDA was at the meeting, Just for one. and um, I had she had written me earlier in the week, and I said, "Well, we're we're submitting for another project," and she said, "That's interesting." So I tried to find out what that meant, but she, I didn't in the meeting get an answer to that. Just how that might affect if this goes forward, and we're one of the towns that would be part of uh, an application to USDA for this project. It's two, it, it's two different pots of money, but. Well, that, it's down yeah. the line. Yeah. So um, we had a uh, proposed intermissible agreement, which I sent to council, and it's been reviewed. And I did share that with um, Bob Dean, who had, was taking responsibility for that from FERCOG, and with um, Marlo Warner, who's the new DPW director. Um, and they asked for, oh, if she would do more. And I said, no, <laughs> at least not at this point. There's another hurdle, and I'm not sure I'm capturing this right. It's not a hurdle, but it, it is a hurdle. Montague is looking at doing, I believe, a, some kind of a composting facility, and they were talking about if they were to do that, then maybe it doesn't make sense for them to participate because then they have to drive stuff back and back. You know, it, it might not be worth it for them. So I was unclear about that. Uh, at any rate, it sounds like those two big issues have to be resolved before this project goes forward. I, I'm not sure how far the composting is along because there was that was sort of experimental. Um, so even at the digester, they're not sure either. Yeah. I think that's what they were saying. Uh, yeah. To so yeah. I'm I'm not sure if that's, but it's good that you pointed that out because obviously Montague would impact the digester viability. So the, the feedback I got from our council, Sarah Bellino, who does a lot of the contracts, is that she would want to rewrite it. You know, there were, she made some comments on it, but she said she'd r rather see different language. So um, I would, I, it's my thought that we should wait and see rather than invest the time in it um, if it's actually going to be feasible, if it's going to get through those two hurdles and, uh, you know, end up being cost effective for the towns. It, she can do it very quickly, but. Well, what's the harm in us waiting? I mean, is it? Is there something pressing that we need to? No, so I just wanted just to update there. you on yeah. it. And it's very nice to be working with Marlo, who's a good partner uh, from the town of Greenfield. So I think that's a big plus. I, I think showing that we're interested is enough at this point. Okay. There's, no, there's no commitment no. deadline. Right. Right. And, that, and that's why we want to stay interested, because we're not really sure how, what would be the most viable for us. I mean, if the Montague thing goes forward, then we might be interested in that too. Uh, uh, you know, there's potential. There's potential for two kinds of different projects to address this, the huge jump in sludge costs. Right. And that's what this is: is is a re trying to come up with regional mm -hmm. solutions outside the box. So we want to. We do want to show that we're interested, sure. but obviously, we want to see what it pans right. out. So I think it's you, important to. to Day, you know, have a seat at the right. table with that. Absolutely. So I'm really appreciative you went. It, it would be good, I think, if both things went because you know they they both are kind of in the same realm. And if, if one doesn't work out, you know, if we could be supportive in, in both avenues. As our current situation is only going to get worse. Yeah. You know, well, that's why I'm so appreciative of Bud and what Bud's trying to do to keep our costs down because our revenue streams are drying up, and all this. All our trash and recycles are the expenses are just shooting out of sight. I mean, it's incredible. We're not talking like a hundred percent. We're talking about thousands of percent increases. We don't know what's going to happen with the next MRF contract. So. The, the next contract is going to be really. I mean, we're really going to have to, and, and that's you know that's a huge expense to our residents. So, 
you know, we're trying very hard. This next budget year, we should, we should be okay. But, uh, you know, the following year is going to be really tough unless we come up with some really creative solutions. That being said. Yeah, I, I think you, might, you should go ahead and um, I think he can sign it even if he... Right. You want to go ahead and I, make, a I, uh, make a motion we sign the warrant as proposed? I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Why don't you go ahead and got sign it. Um, Robert tells me you don't need to sign all of these. You need to sign these two and one of these. So, mm -hmm. but I've always had you sign them all. I think it's... For all the posted places. Yeah, I think it's better. Uh, we also have, if you want to begin the conversation, the, the motion language for the... Uh, do you want to actually read that and tell people in the public what we're having on the town meeting? Let me just summarize. We've had a lot of discussion. Yeah, yeah. I, can do, I can do that, actually. Yeah, uh, just except I gave summarize you all it. Of summarize <laughs> the three articles. So uh, the first article is the big one, the, the reason why we're even having this meeting, and that's uh, for a million dollars. Uh, for um, DEP required repair costs at the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility. Um, have what? Yeah, they have them. Yes. <coughs> I and I, I, I understand what that's for. Have we, that million dollars is still not a, a guaranteed price, correct? That it hasn't actually gone out to bid. No, no, no. Okay. no. We don't. We estimate. It's estimate. And again, this is an article, and a motion is different. We can talk sure. about a proposed motion. Yep. I'll give you that after we go through this quickly. But just for the purpose of informing the public, to run through these, we we've, we've had these conversations. But um, thank you. We'll read this here for, for Trevor. Um, article two is. Um, <laughs> I think I've talked a bit about this. This is $163.10 that we are required by law to appropriate um, because um, of the law. <laughs> this is money that comes as a result of taxation of transport companies like, um, why did I just get their name? Lyft and what's the other one? Uber. Uber, I've taken Uber. Uber and Lyft. Um, and the legislators wanted all communities in the state to benefit. Uh, so um, we are getting a hundred, or we already have a, perhaps the hundred and sixty-three dollars and ten cents, but it requires us to appropriate it at a town meeting. And I have background information from the Department of Revenue and the, you know why it's required. I believe that our our delegation. I've talked extensively. I, when I first called Representative Kulik about it, I said, by the way, Worthington is getting a dime. Literally, they're getting 10 cents, and they have to appropriate. So um, at any rate, I think legislation may be um, pending to change this, so that may, perhaps under a certain amount of funds, you, you don't need to go through this process. I'm not sure how they're going to do that. But anyway, we need to do this. Um, and the last one is... Um, we're, oh, I thought I put the money in. That's the $20,000 yeah, for it's 20, 19, I thought I actually put it in after I something. talked with Kip about wanting to, to give people more of a idea. But we can get the motions up. As soon as there's a decision made on the motions, we can get that out. You okay. can talk about it in a meeting. We can put it on the website, yeah. all of that. I mean, they could just, we could also just change the pay. Oh, oh it's all on one page. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, sorry. I forgot. So, um, <laughs> So we're looking at twenty thousand dollars, and that's we talked about it at the last meeting. To it's it hopefully will be nineteen thousand eight hundred for an engineer to do all the work up to submit, and so we're ready to set to go for two different grants. Well, that and they covers apply the application the too, right? Yeah, I think that what you mentioned was a good idea. Don't you think is to have that in the motions put on the town website and yep. leave it leave the heading right there, so when people open up the page, they can see right you know the motion you know the proposed motions for the special town meeting in that date. Yep. I think I agree. As soon as it's agreed upon sure. by the board. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So you can at your next meeting and that's another question. When is your next meeting? <laughs> um, I think yeah, could we just put on the agenda the Somerville? If if you can't find from Connor the Somerville um, regs for the Board of Health on uh, vaping then uh, prohibition then just ask him to resend it. Um, 
We should have asked Michelle why she was here. Oh, maybe she can send it to yeah. them if they can't find it. And I know Connor had him because you showed him to me, and he just I said put him in the file because we're we're going to have it on a, the you know the next couple meetings or whatever. So it's in a file somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. now that you're saying no. vaping, would not use the Summerfield. Summerfield it, didn't ring the reason, a bell, but vaping. The reason why I just wanted us to discuss it because we've had no opportunity to discuss it, and yeah. then I wanted to set a public hearing so that we could you know, do a prohibition by spring. That was sort of my deadline. Um, because yeah. once the kids are walking around, I wanted to make sure we're, that they couldn't buy e-cigarettes or well, vaping. I, th I think it's worth thing. checking. Um, I think there are, there's legislation pending to prohibit it in the state. So I think that's worth looking at too. It, it probably is Just to stay on top of that if anyone asks. Yeah, least, but yeah. In the meantime, there, in the meantime, I wanted us to take care of it for the spring. Are, do you want to meet next week, or do you want to go to the twentieth? Well, if you're going to uh, settle on motion language, um, you can just send it to us, and if we have any problem with it, we can just send okay it, yeah, comment that on way. it. Right. Or the board no. should vote. The, the board, board should yeah. vote as a whole. Well, I think that the yeah. finance committee is is um, yeah. anxious to to see what the language that you're going to propose in the motion. I think we should have some dialogue about it because the articles of origination of the sewer system um, leave it open to town meeting to decide a part of the. Um, it says that you have to pay a minimum of 25%, the town does, but it leaves open the other 75%. So the way the article, the motion, is going to be presented per council's uh, wording is, is you know, something we should discuss, why the language states that and have that dialogue, I think, publicly. And then so that way the Finance Committee understands as well and, you know, they can make a proper recommendation. Okay. And also, I think you want to talk about the debt exclusion. There's been discussion about whether you want to make the motion contingent on a debt exclusion. I think we need to be clear on what the board is going to recommend, whether we do that or not, because the Finance Committee has had a lot of dialogue about that. Well, maybe then we can meet on Tuesday. I, I'm tentatively on the Board of Agenda for, I mean, the, um, the agenda for the Board of Selectmen in Berniston on the 13th. If I have a DPH report on the Mosquito um, you know, end of year mosquito report. Yeah. The finance um, committee, I think, agreed they weren't going to meet again until they're not going to meet next week, I don't think. They're going to meet the following week, I believe. Like the 18th? I believe it was the Tuesday, oh, so yeah. The Tuesday. So that would I put off posting so of any motions on the warrant, you know, on, yeah. on the. Yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't right. get your okay. language. Um, so, do you want to meet next week then? Or? I, I can't meet Wednesday. Well, okay. well we just I, I don't want to say for sure oh, because right, if, right. if DPH okay. doesn't have a final report for me to present, well, what, then we're gonna, I'm going to go to the 26th. Why don't we tentatively call it for the 20th? And if we do get things straightened okay. out, then we could always, by the end of the week, well, I guess we couldn't. Well, Monday yeah. morning you could post it. It's yeah, I could. Time. Yeah, I that's could, when we post it. Yeah, okay. For, oh, are you talking about... Is that a Tuesday? No, no I'm saying that we do it the 20th. We'll do the 20th. But if for some reason you can get everything together yeah. for next Wednesday and we want to meet, then yeah, we'll Yeah, because Carolyn, I think you sort of already know, you know, if you've been in other rooms where we've had sort of the dialogue about it and capital planning. So you sort of know what, so I don't know, I just want I mean, to mostly, not, and I think the board, I think we just want to have some public dialogue so when it gets to town meeting, people have the advantage right. of knowing I, what I think it's we're important talking that people about understand that you know we're going to do short, potentially do short term funding and until we hear about the grant one way or the other absolutely and, right um, right well that's sort of the implementation piece but the real questions i think are going to be around you know are you, is your intention going to be even just in this amount going to be debt exclude um and then you know that leads into the bigger project. This is just that million dollar piece, but some of that dialogue is going to come up just in general, sure. you know, about the project. So I think we should just be prepared to discuss that. Okay. So, <laughs> the 20th. Okay, the 20th. Thank you. Okay, I guess that's about it. Is there anyone that would like to make a public comment about anything? 
No. Hearing none, I make adjourn. a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you.